Hi, my name is Joel Marcello, and my presentation will focus on a scenario that will show it does matter where you are born. Being born in another country presents barriers to employment for new immigrants in Canada. Ricardo Jose had immigrated to Canada from the Philippines in 2018 as a civil engineer. A relative had sponsored him, and being a skilled worker, his immigration process was rel relatively quick. Upon his arrival, he applied to engineering jobs while working part-time as a security guard. He obtained a degree from England's Oxford University. While completing his degree, he worked for various high-profile companies in the Philippines. It has almost been over a year and he cannot find a comparable job. Every company he had, had applied to was asking for Canadian experience. At the start of his job search, just getting an interview was difficult. He had to remove the address of the companies he worked for in his resume. He had also edited his first name as Rick, a more common name for Canadians. He felt that he was being negatively looked at because he was not Canadian. He was also conscious of his Filipino accent. Every company he had applied for was asking for Canadian experience. From 2011 to 2016, there were 1.2 million new immigrants who had settled in Canada. Of the 1.2 million immigrants that arrived in Canada during that time, there were more Filipino immigrants than any other ethnic groups. 780,000 reported they are a visible minority in the country, making Filipinos and Filipino Canadians the fourth largest visible minorities after South Asians, 1.9 million, Chinese, 1.5 million, and Black minorities at 1.2 million in the country. Filipinos in Canada numbered around 901,000 in April 2018 comprising a mix of naturalized Canadians, permanent residents, and temporary foreign workers. The number comprises 2.6% of Canada's national population. It's to note that Ricardo's situation resonates with any other ethnic group as well. So the, the, fight, the, the Filipinos, the, any, any other groups may experience this type of um, attitude towards new immigrants looking for new jobs. From the table highlighted in yellow, the stat shows that Filipinos fare well in finding jobs as they are the lowest unemployment rate and the highest employment rate among different ethnic groups. The graphical chart shows that although we are seeing a rise to employment rate for immigrants, it shows that the immigrants lag behind Canadian born at the core age of 25 to 54 years old. Back to Ricardo's situation. Ricardo had a call from a recruiter regarding setting up a face-to-face -face interview, which is a panel interview with the hiring manager and HR. Decided to have it the next day. Upon arrival, he checked into security. During the interview, Ricardo answered all the questions with clarity. After Ricardo left, the manager and the HR rep had a debrief. Although he had the skill and experience needed for the job, the manager pointed out that all his experience was abroad. He remarked, why would he hire someone who is not a true Canadian? He remarked that it's stealing a job from Canadians. He also pointed out that Ricardo's Filipino accent may cause some communication issues in the team. But HR pointed out that to the manager that he cannot discriminate with respect to the ethnic origin, and his remarks was deeply troubling. Solution. Provincial and territorial human rights agencies, for example, the Ontario Human Rights Code protects people from discrimination in areas such as restaurants, stores, schools, housing, and most workplaces. But it doesn't need to come to, to tribunals and hearings where people sue other corporations in terms of injustices. Corporations and these authorities involved need to develop and oversee this social injustice. Another solution would be social networks. Social networks is important in the social and economic integration of Filipino immigrants in Canada, and for the most part, all immigrants. They provide housing, employment, connections from their communities, religious communities, and family members. Not-for-profit agencies that help professional immigrants and other immigrants seeking work. These agencies are totally free of charge and assist job seekers from diverse backgrounds who are facing barriers to employment and to integrate them into the job market by providing them employment services, linking employers to skilled people, and building networks with community partners. OCASI is the um, Ontario Council of Agencies in Serving Immigrants. The mission of the, this agency is to achieve equality, access, and full participation for immigrants and refugees in every aspect of Canadian life. And lastly, like I said in the beginning, corporate and government social responsibility. They could play a major role into helping 
crush these barriers. Corporate and government um, could actually, companies could actually uh, dig deeper into hiring practices and in the, through the interview process. Employees in key areas such as HR should report any unethical issues. From a progressive lens, employers should create internships and mentoring programs in their communities. Government can support targeted job creation through economic incentives and support for employers who create internships or permanent jobs for immigrants. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation and, and see the barriers that affect young immigrants while seeking employment, even with professional status or with a higher education. Thank you. And here are my references.